I had the unbelievable chance to speak to the legendary Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu and Final Fantasy's creator himself, Hironobu Sakaguchi. We had a long and delightful conversation about their new Final Fantasy game called Fantasian. I'm going to post the full interview soon, but today I want to share this sneak peek of the conversation with you, where Hironobu Sakaguchi and Nobuo Uematsu themselves will listen to one of my Final Fantasy VII orchestrations, and where we talk about video game music and how Uematsu-san wrote one winged angel. A special thanks to Mike at Mistwalker for translating this interview live. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Oh, sumimasen. I, I'm having a, a moment. Watashi wa Alex desu. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Chotto nihongo shaberu demo. Honto ni eta desu. Sumimasen. Genki desu kai? Genki desu, arigato. Alex-san wa genki. Genki, genki desu. Uh, Ima, uh, mm. koko de, 3, 3 a.m. in the morning. Ah, honto ni? Sonda asa de? Honto ni Gomen, gomen, gomen. No, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm really honored to be here with you. And, uh, uh, Uematsu-san to Sakaguchi-san wa watashi no, boku no hiro. ありがとうございます。ありがとうとう。本当にあ、上松さんのあ、音楽を本当にありがとうございます。いや、嬉しいです。あ、私はあ、今作曲家です。おお。でも、I Uh-huh. And your music inspired me a lot to, uh, to become a composer myself. One song that is always going to make me cry is the Final Fantasy VII mm-hmm. main theme. I saw it at Distant Worlds some years ago, and they were showing it with some footage of Cloud walking in the world map and while the orchestra was playing the theme, and I started crying like a baby, uh, like I haven't done for like 10 years or something. I just love it so much because... Final Fantasy, especially Final Fantasy VII, taught me a lot. Mm. I played that game when I was a child. I spent so many afternoons playing it, and it taught me to see the beauty in the world. And also, characters like Zack Fair from Final Fantasy VII taught me to embrace my dreams. And growing up, I was always fascinated by these games, and I listened to the music a lot. And I don't know, it gave me a place to belong. And I thought, wow. Like what Hironobu Sakaguchi-san and Nobu Masa-san have done here, creating this world is so precious because it's, you know, it's it's a place where so many people can belong. And I wanted to, when I grew up, do the same for other people too. So I became a composer because of Final Fantasy, because I was like, I want to do what Nobu Masa-san did for multiple thousands of people. I want to do it myself as well. And I made it. I'm a professional composer now. That changed my life, and it's one of the most beautiful gifts that I ever received. This passion, this desire to do good to other people is something I learned from you too. And uh, I, I am uh, so happy for that. I'm so grateful for that. And I was wondering if you would like to hear a Final Fantasy VII arrangement that I wrote. And it's very special because when I published it, a lot of people said that they cried, just like I cry. When I listen to the FSL main theme, it was a bit of a full circle moment. And if now you would, you know, like to listen to it and tell me what you think about it, it would make me so happy. If there's no time, that's fine as well. But this couldn't have been us, could it? But what if it was? It was us. We did this. But this isn't the way it's supposed to be. Sephiroth has to be stopped. There's no greater threat to the planet than him. I can't help but wonder if this is a lost cause. Some lost causes are worth fighting for. I know that together we can do this. The world won't end today. But you, you will. Point of no return. Embrace. 
embrace your dreams. Protect your honor. As a soldier! Ah, yeah, it looked like a theatrical movie trailer. Yeah, that, that, I was trying to go for, for that sound. Yeah, they saw your Fantasia and funk arrangement with the bass. I'm so happy. Lemasa-san, what was it that pushed you to become a game composer? I heard that you're a fan of PFM, Premiata Forneria Marconi. Watashi wa Italia jin this. As an Italian, it makes me so proud to know that my favorite composer in the world is inspired by a band from my country. So I'd like to know what other bands and other musicians and the artists inspired your work and made you want to become a composer. So I, of course, a long time ago, listened to the radio a lot and I've listened to most of the popular music, especially rock, including uh, Elton John, The Carpenters, Stevie Wonder, Led Zeppelin. Deep Purple. Deep Purple. And Deep Purple, yes. <laughs> and I think listening to these artists alone probably wouldn't have put me on the path of becoming a music composer. But in the progressive rock movement, in, it wasn't simply just rock where they were rocking for the sake of rocking. They started introducing some orchestrations in the midst of a lot of uh, heavy rock. And uh, these include a lot of other type of artists. すみません、その違うジャンルのアーティスト、プログレッシブロックの二方の名前がちょっとピックアップ例えば、イエスとか、エヴァーソン・ルーカル・パーマーとか、ジェネシスとかですかね。And、ジェネシス・エムーソン・パーマーはい。And it taught me that the rock genre could be very beautiful and it could carry its own melody that works well with an orchestration. And that got me on the path of looking into more of the classical music genre. And that ultimately led me to discovering uh, artists like P PMF. Um, and it was just really, really beautiful rock that I think set the foundation and gave me a lot of ideas for what I could do and compose in a role-playing game. I suppose that's how One Winged Angel came to be. Like, it's this like, blend of many different genres and everybody when they heard it was like wow they lost their minds and still after so many years people still lose their minds and uh yeah it's beautiful and it's uh i i, I can feel in wematsu sans music that he has like a very wide uh, variety of inspirations because you may have like you know a techno piece with uh, the man with the machine gun and then you have an orchestral piece and you have a flamenco and you know you kind of have everything and there's nothing that he can do. So, yeah, 
that's probably why it's my favorite. I know. I know. One Winged Angel, one. I think the One Winged Angel. I would attribute not so much to the idea of progressive rock, but that was more of an experiment for myself when we were working on Final Fantasy VII, and I decided I was going to compose the music for the last boss every morning. I would wake up and come up with a few different phrases, a few measures, and. I would do this for a few weeks, and after about three weeks, I would have a lot of different ideas that I had laid out on on the tracks. And it was about mixing and matching these different pieces to see what order really resonated the most. So I think that's more of a kind of modern music approach, or is more like a a different genre, not related to progressive rock. I feel that with Final Fantasy, I'm a huge fan. Like Final Fantasy is my Number one favorite game, and I love it. I love the new ones as well as the old ones. But I know in the community there's a a, l- a large amount of people who stopped liking it a lot after ten. Ten was the last one they really liked, and I feel that those people should definitely play Fantasia because it does feel like you know the continuation of a you know of a type of Final Fantasy game that is not being made anymore. So I hope that they see this interview and they pick up. Fantasian because it's great, but uh, to those people, like, what would you say? Like, what? Why do you think? What do you think is the biggest reason for JRPG fans, especially fans of the old Final Fantasies, to play Fantasian? Besides the fact that it was made by the legends who made Final Fantasy one to six. For us, it kind of leads into the last question, but uh, this. I guess you could call it almost like a Final Fantasy 6.5 or a Final Fantasy 10.5, where we saw these different branches of Final Fantasy that has not been developed any further, but revived it in a way. And for us to say it, I think that would be kind of weird. So this is something that Alex, we entrust to you to help spread the word and build excitement. Alex, <laughs> <laughs> For, I, I will do it. I will do that. It, it, it does deserve that. Yeah, we must. Nanika. As you mentioned, Alex, a lot of fans, I think, say Final Fantasy changed or it's not Final Fantasy anymore, kind of as 10 with being the pivotal point. But whether you take video games or anime or manga, I think you always have to challenge yourself into producing something new and, and taking on new challenges with these mediums. So as you transition from one generation to the next, I still believe that what they've done and what they've created is uh, Final Fantasy and watching it evolve in the way it does makes guys like us, you know, old geezers like us, quite happy. So it's, I think, uh, you know, it's not something that, uh, when I create this music, I really feel like I'm, I'm in the moment and I don't just want the old fans who play games because of the nostalgia factor, or just because I liked it way JRPGs used to be. This is, of course, us creating certain emotions and certain uh, feelings in, in the moment as I'm creating, because that's, that's all I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the next project when I'm composing music. So... This is something that I hope people play out of not just nostalgia, but anyone can play this and anyone can experience and, and go on this journey together. And we try to make things that I feel are very fun that I think will move people. And I think it will transcend just the uh, so-called old Final Fantasy demographic. And I hope it reaches them as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, that's honestly, to, to my shame... That's what I, when I saw Fantasia, I'm like, oh, wow, this is old school. I'm, I'm going to feel that nostalgia. But then when I played it, I realized, hey, this is not actually just like an old school JRPG. This is just transcending that genre. It's doing so much more. And there's like, if I could sell Fantasia in one, in one phrase, I would say they fixed random encounters. Because now there's a dimension and you, you don't have to do all the random encounters. And it's so nice, you know. But, but in general, like the diorama and like everything, the, the characters are so beautiful. And I like also the fact that there's now poems that accompany the gameplay. You have these texts, like poems and stuff. And yeah, there's loads of new things and the music is very different. So I hope people don't categorize it as old school because it's not that. It's like it's whole new brand of uh, game. And I'm very happy to know that 
you know, Sakaguchi san and Umasa san do this. They, they're like, they keep on being visionaries, despite people want them to be like, hey, do what you did before again. I know how hard it must be as an artist, because I am one myself, but I really admire that willingness to go forwards and to look beyond what people see. And uh, sometimes people catch up after 20 years. And I think that's what happened with FSM Remake, maybe. The music Mimasa san made many years ago, when you hear the remake, you're like, wow, this was written 20 years ago, but it sounds like it was made to be written on big, like orchestral arrangements, like modern standards in 2021. And uh yeah, I don't know how they do it, but it seems like whatever they create, they look in the future. That's very amazing. So I'm really proud uh, of both of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was such a crazy moment for me. And I feel so happy that Wemasu san and Sakaguchi san gifted us a brand new Final Fantasy game, Fantasia, which I absolutely recommend to anybody who loved Final Fantasy 1 all the way up to 10. If you like those type of Final Fantasies, Fantasia is exactly made for you.